Hi, my name's Laura and this is German Grammar Pod. Today's episode is about genders in German and specifically how to know which gender to use. So, how do you know which gender a word is? Well, to a great extent it's arbitrary and you just have to memorize nouns genders. However, there are a few rules and I'll go through those in a minute. But before I get on to those, I just wanted to say for those of you at an early stage of learning German, I wouldn't put much effort into this at all to start with. You've got more important areas on which to focus your learning time, such as learning new words. The main thing you need to know about gender is that it exists in German, and this means that German has more than one word for the and a. In most circumstances, German speakers will understand you whether you've got the gender right or not. And the chances are that you haven't yet learnt any of the words where the gender changes the meaning so that getting it wrong means you won't be understood correctly. These tend not to come up at a beginner's level. An example of a more common one would be that ze in the masculine means lake, whereas ze in the feminine means sea. However, once your German starts to improve, it is definitely worth making an effort with genders. As you'll get to a point where correct use of gender will earn you marks and exams, looks better and more professional in written communication, and makes both your spoken and your written German more easily and quickly comprehensible. Books, and a lot of German teachers, recommend that you should learn which gender a noun is every time you learn a new one in German. I for one never managed this, although I did spend a very dull month at university attempting it and I actually consider it an inefficient use of your learning time to try. Instead, I learnt some of the rules, the odd statistic, and the genders of words that I know I use a lot. So, for instance, I know that dog, that's hunt, is masculine, and that cat, that's katze, is feminine. But I'm not really sure what gender parrot, which is papagai, is. I also know the gender of some less common words because my interests in my work mean that I use them a lot. So, for instance, I know that the German for report, Bericht, is masculine because I use that one a lot at work. The statistic I use most is as follows. 39% of German words are masculine, 35% are feminine, and only 26% are neuter. So when in doubt, and when none of the rules I'm about to give you apply, I mainly guess masculine. Now for the rules. German has quite a lot of rules by which you can tell which gender a noun is, but I'm not going to list all of them here, as it's a lot to learn, and a lot of the rules only apply either to a relatively small number of words, or to groups of words that are not frequently used in general conversation, such as the names of rocks and minerals. Instead, I'm going to give you the rules I've found to be most useful, and if anyone is looking for the full list, they should get hold of a copy of the book Hammer's German Grammar. So, the rules. Like in English, but with two exceptions, German nouns that refer to people, and which by their nature specify the person's sex, are always the natural gender, so man, junge, and bruder, which mean man, boy, and brother respectively, are all masculine, and Frau, Schwester, and Mutter, which mean woman, sister, and mother, are all feminine. The first exception to this is girl, which always comes out as neuter, whether the word used is Mädchen, Mädel, or Fräulein, because these words have endings which mean that the word has to be neuter. The second exceptions are Weib and Frauenzimmer, two rather negative and infrequently used words for a woman, which are also neuter. Anything else? father, grandmother, brother, granny, uncle, etc. are all their natural gender. But be careful to make sure that the gender is specified in the meaning of the word. Baby and child, baby and kind in German, which do not specify gender, are both neuter. Whereas mensch, meaning human being or person, and referring equally to males and females, is masculine. And person, meaning pretty much the same thing, and also applying equally to males and females, is feminine. The next rule is for jobs. German job titles almost always specify whether the person doing the job is male or female, like English does in certain jobs like waiter and waitress, and sometimes actor and actress. These two are always their natural gender, so Kellnerin, waitress, is feminine, 
and Kellner, waiter, is masculine. As another handy hint, the majority of female job titles are the same as the masculine job title with an IN on the end, like with Kellner and Kellnerin. This also applies to nationalities. I am an Englanderin, which is a feminine noun, but a man from England is an Englander, which is a masculine noun. Another of my favourite rules is that all alcoholic drinks are masculine, with the exception of beer, which is neuter. So it's der Wein, der Whisky, der Gin, der Vodka, der Schnaps and das Bier. Although this doesn't apply to the names of individual cocktails, which can be other genders. Three more useful masculine rules are that all names of seasons, months and days of the week are masculine. All words referring to types of weather, such as snow, wind, rain and sunshine, are masculine. And all nouns referring to compass points are masculine, such as north, south, east and west. Hammer also lists eight different word endings which are always masculine, but I've never found enough words with these endings to consider them worth learning. Instead, I prefer to remember the statistic that most nouns, over 60% according to Hammer, ending in EL, EN and ER, are masculine, with the exception of infinitives used as nouns, which all end in EN and are also always neuter. So it's well worth guessing masculine for words you don't know that end in EL, EN or ER, and memorising any exceptions you use a lot. On the neuter front, as just mentioned, the infinitives of verbs used as nouns are all neuter. So, for instance, essen, when it's being used as a noun meaning food or meal, as opposed to as a verb meaning to eat, is neuter. Don't worry, you can't get confused. Verbs don't have genders, so if you find yourself needing to know what gender essen is, then it means it's being used as a noun. In fact, other parts of speech in general, when being used as nouns, are neuter. So, for instance, when you're talking about blue as a noun instead of in its usual form as an adjective, that is, the blue of her eyes as opposed to her blue eyes, then it's neuter. The same also applies to languages, so English, Spanish and Deutsch are all neuter. There are also a number of word endings, which always mean a word is neuter, which are worth learning. The most important of these is chen, C-H-E-N which is why the word for girl, Mädchen, is neuter instead of feminine like you'd expect. Another important neuter ending is Lein, which is why Fräulein, another word sometimes used to mean girl, and which also used to be commonly used to mean Miss, as in Miss Smith, is also neuter. Both Chen and Lein are diminutive suffixes, which means that they refer to a smaller version of the word they're attached to like let in booklet and piglet in English. Also, over 90% of words beginning with ge, such as gebäude, building, and gesprech, talk, are neuter. Moving on to feminine nouns, there are quite a lot of endings that occur quite frequently that mean that a word is feminine. These are ung, for instance, meinung, which means opinion, schaft, for instance, Freundschaft, which means friendship. Kite, for instance, Süßigkeit, which means sweet. Height, for instance, Gesundheit, which means health. Zion, for instance, Station, which means station. Zion, for instance, Explosion, which means explosion. And In, for instance, Freundin, which means girlfriend or female friend. Also, over 90% of nouns ending in E are feminine, such as Liebe, which means love, or Blume, which means flower. So, to sum up, German nouns come in three genders, masculine, feminine and neuter. Unlike in English, where all inanimate objects are neuter, German designates roughly 39% of all nouns masculine, 35% feminine, and 26% neuter. There's no way to work out from most nouns what gender they are. However, there are rules that apply to certain words that will help you tell the gender. The most productive of these rules are that over 90% of nouns that end in an E are feminine, 
and all nouns that end in ung, kite, height, zion, zion, shaft or in are feminine. Words that end in xian or line are neuter, as are all words that have been converted into a noun from another part of speech, and 90% of the nouns that start with ge. Except for beer, which is neuter, and cocktails, which can be any gender, all alcoholic drinks are masculine. Seasons, days, months and types of weather are also all masculine and over 60% of words that end in EL, ER or EN are also masculine. Well, that's it for this time. If you'd like to see a transcript of this episode or some of the facts I've given you shown in table form, you can visit my website at sites.google.com slash site slash German Grammar Pod. If you'd like to contact me, you can email me at germangrammarpod at yahoo.co.uk. You can also subscribe to the German Grammar Pod podcast that these videos originated from through iTunes or by visiting germangrammarpod.blogspot.com. If you'd like to be notified when I post more German Grammar Pod videos, then click the subscribe button under this video. Next time, I'll be talking about the nominative. But for now, it's goodbye from German Grammar Pod. I hope you enjoyed the episode and that you'll listen again next time. Goodbye.